Another thing you might want to do once you've created artwork like this, which I'll just hide for the moment, is to map artwork onto the side. Now I'm going to quickly click to create an object of 60 mil by 60 mil, just in gray. I'm going to flick that to nearly white with a nearly white edge. And I'm going to apply an extrude and bevel effect with the same depth again to create effectively a cube. What can we do with the cube? Well, we can make dice. Well, we can make one die and then make more dice from that. If we create a square and align a simple dot, make sure the dot's in black in the center of it, then we can duplicate out that central dot a few different ways using, and we can use the guides to keep things in line and select more than one and duplicate them out and duplicate them out again. Now there are ways to distribute these things evenly, but we'll look at that later in the lesson. If I've got one shape, I could simply drag and then command D to duplicate with step and repeat. So I've now got several different shapes. For each one of these, I'm going to select all the dots that I don't need to leave me with six different faces, each with the right number of dots on them. Starting from a consistent place like this means that they will all look appropriate. It means that you've got all the right dots in the right places and you didn't have to guess where they might be. And it is best to be consistent, as consistent as you can up front to make sure they all look the same. All I need to do now is create six symbols. So I'll head to my symbols panel and create a symbol for each side of our die. Because I've got that base gray underneath, and that could be any color you like, probably white would be appropriate as well. It means that there's going to be a nice consistent size. And it's a good idea to make sure that if you're going to use symbols like this, uh, make sure that they are as consistent as they can be. Now I've got all of those as symbols. I don't need them in my artboard anymore. I do want them on my shape. Use the appearance panel to re-edit the existing effect. You can see there that I've got 16 faces on this cube, which is a few too many. How can we simplify it? If I cancel out of all of this and choose to set it with no stroke, is that going to be a simpler extrude and bevel? Well, let's have a look all the way back into map art. Yes, it is. So only six surfaces instead of 16. So what we would have had before is the six internal, six outside, and then some extra corners or uh, vertices or edges, which didn't quite uh, smooth out appropriately. And they needed to have additional surfaces. Ditching the stroke here has simplified this quite a bit. I'm going to choose some artwork. I want number one. I could spend a lot of time getting that exactly right or scale to fit works well. I need to pay attention to which face goes where because on a die, opposite sides add up to seven. So that's on one side and that's dot number one. That was on the opposite side. I need to make sure that is dot number six scale to fit. Next one along on that side, let's go with number two scale to fit. And we're not on the opposing side. Let's go ahead. That one needs to be number five scale to fit. Let's go back. This is going to be three and four. So we'll go with number three scale to fit. Next one, next one again, back to number four scale to fit. So we had six and one, two and five, three and four preview. That looks good. Okay. What this means is we've got a die with all the right dots on all the right faces, which we can spin around and see all the other faces of, and it's always going to be a correct die. It's also a lot simpler because we've only got a fill and no stroke. We could option or alt drag a few new copies of this, rotate things around, preview, there we go. Try it again, spin it around a little, preview again. That's good. 
Next thing you have to do, to, anything to do with gambling or Las Vegas, I expect to see lots of dice all over your artwork. <laughs>